My name is David Glennon, Senior Digital Delivery Director uh, here with the Red Sea Development Company. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll take you through a bit of the project at a high level, and then I'll start to dig into a little bit of detail into some of the things that we've done and some of the areas um, uh, that, that we've seen some success in. Uh, so the Red Sea project, we're part of Vision 2030, which is the drive by the kingdom to diversify its economy. Uh, there's, there's a number of things going on in there. We've got the Public Investment Fund. We're one of the initiatives under the Public Investment Fund. Um, they've got one stream called the, the Giga Projects. We're one of those. So similar to, you may well have heard, likes of Neo or Kadir. Um, so we're the, 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 the Red Sea project out on the west coast of uh, Saudi Arabia. You can see on the screen there uh, some of the things that are discussed, um, you know, trying to create uh, 70,000 uh, new jobs. Um, and I, I was lucky I was there. I was, I was in this area last week. Uh, we had, uh, I, was, I was there with my family, got, got to spend some time on, on those beaches there. They're absolutely fantastic. The water is, um, you know, is, is blue and clear. I uh, got to see some of the, the amazing wildlife that you can see, see on the screen there, as well as some of that fantastic coral. And then drove back through the country, seeing some of the, the volcanic areas as well. I'm starting to try to set some of the context. You can see one of our challenges. We've got to go to this area and, and create these uh, destinations um, and do that without destroying uh, uh, what is there, because that's effectively what our, our product is. We're, we're trying to bring people to come see this amazing part of Saudi Arabia. Um, and... It's, uh, uh, I've already touched on the, on the environmental piece, but this is probably one of our key drivers. And if you listen to our CEO, he's often talking about creating new standards for sustainable uh, development, trying to find a new way to, to create destinations such as this. There's a few things on this slide here that I'd like to draw your, draw your eyes to. So if you look at some of the, the principles, are looking to adopt and develop pioneering technologies for uh, operational efficiency, as well as using science, data and technology to, to make better informed decisions. So straight away, you can see how some of the vision of the organization is aligned to um, uh, so it's only what I'm trying to deliver from a digital uh, perspective. Uh, so some of the things that we can see here, you know, uh, no single use plastics. Uh, the destinations will be 100% um, powered from renewable energy, 30% net positive uh, conservation uh, benefit, as well as uh, creating, you know, jobs and skills uh, within the kingdom as well. This, this is all uh, what we're trying to do. And certainly from, from my perspective, uh, looking at how we can contribute to that from a, di from a digital um, standpoint um, and on from the sort of socioeconomic piece, like how can we provide a um, sort of digital legacy, uh, as it were. Uh, so you can I've sort of touch on some of the environmental piece and the sustainability bits, and then if you look at the the types of offerings that we have, the type of assets that we're uh, that we're creating uh, in the destination, you can see that they're super high quality. Um, so trying to provide that that sort of luxury or hyper luxury experience, so you can see you know that uh, ensuring that we get high quality product is going to be a challenge, and then doing that um, on a site that is the the, the size of Belgium, uh, there isn't you know um, a huge amount of infrastructure that that's there already, so we're having to develop that. But we'll be seeing assets open and expecting to be uh, having guests in in the destination for the end of next year. So you can see it's a it's a challenging environment and you know very challenging uh, timelines. But what that does, though, it does give us a, a great opportunity to be successful uh, with digital transformation. And the po point of this slide here is it's well used the term that's combinatorial innovations. I mean, I've, I've been doing this kind of work for a couple of decades now, and the way that we've got such alignment here is super exciting. So we've got that technology push that's coming in. Um, if you, I, I think there's some real convergence going on in industry at the moment on in the digital spent in the digital sense and from a technology perspective. Um, we've got plenty of bandwidth, there's 5G, there's sensors everywhere, we're starting to see the cost of storage come down, there's, um, uh, you know, we're starting to, see, starting to use artificial intelligence, the cost of that is, is coming down as well, um, and there's, there's a, you know, um, there's a, a change in the way people are working as well, that they're expecting to use technology, both in their personal life as well as their uh, professional life. So we've got this technology push alongside that customer pull, um, and for us, uh, as I said, I've tried to provide some of that context there in the first couple of minutes as to why this is so important. We're not going to get this, we're not going to deliver these projects through traditional means. Uh, we have to find different ways of working. So uh, I think we've got, we're like in a really interesting space now, space now to be successful with digital transformation. <clears throat> um, and again, if you've um, heard me talk about what we're doing at the Red Sea before, um, we've got three main focus areas from a digital perspective. So we've got a project centric focus and that's us putting our platforms in place, getting people working together in a safe, organized way um, uh, and enable us to start to use data to drive what we're do doing. And that then 
moves into our data centric focus where we're starting to drive things like data and analytics, making better informed decisions, starting to find efficiencies through automation. And then finally to our customer centricity, and that's the, the use of smart destination techniques to improve the customer experience for the people coming to our uh, uh, coming to our destination. So I'll, I'll go into each of those quite quickly. Um, from a project-centric focus, I think one of the uh, big achievements uh, this year has been getting our accreditation from the British Standards Institute with regards to our use and implementation, the process and technology for ISO 19650, the international standards for digital design and construction. And if you look at this, this picture here, that the chap on the left-hand side, Mohamed Alderwood, he project managed that for us. Uh, he's, uh, he was the first BIM manager that, um, that I hired. He was, uh, he's a Saudi national, and he project managed this um, uh, all the way through. So straight away, you can start to see how we're starting to hit some of those Vision 2030 um, um, uh, objectives around uh, improving uh, or providing skills and opportunities for, um, for the, the, the local nationals. But it's not just about doing that. It's, I mean, it's great to get the external validation, but it sent a clear statement of intent to the supply chain that how we're working, we're expecting to be world class. Um, and we've then provided you know, help to our consultants and our contractors to help them operate at that level as well. But we're not just doing it for the sake of doing it. It's, uh, it then enables or allows other ways of working. Uh, and this example here, um, by focusing on, um, on, on our data and our use of BIM, it's enabled things like design for manufacturing assembly and really helps us accelerate working with partners to provide modern methods of construction. So in this example here, um, we're able to use offsite manufacturing to not only ensure that we get the right quality um, uh, product uh, to our site, um, but also will have uh, a much reduced environmental environmental impact uh, when it when it gets to the gets to the work base. <clears throat> Another good example of that has been the GIS portal that um, uh, launched this year as well. Uh, and we're able to provide different types of data to not just our project team, but our project partners as well. And in this example here, we've partnered with Calcs to um, use satellite imagery. That's helped us with instruction progress, decision making, but also tracking things like the impact that we've had environmentally on our project sites. So making all this data available and that data centric focus that we moved on to next, it's allowing people to make better decisions. And a, a good example here is through the use of automation and we've deployed some lean techniques. Uh, a good example of that would be our big room review. Uh, we've been able to reduce the um, our design review times down from weeks down to days and sometimes hours by just making sure we're able to get the right people into the right space at the right time with the information and the data that's important for them to make a decision. So very quickly, we're able to go back to our project partners, give them a decision so we can move on um, rather than <clears throat> waiting you know, months uh, as we've seen uh, or weeks, certainly weeks that we've seen uh, previously. And then the final one I'll talk about is around customer centricity. I've got a good example here with our smart destination team uh, working with a, a machines talk and we have created a network and a um, and a way of tracking material and people on site. You know, it helps us measure, you know, things like efficiency, um, but probably more importantly is the way uh, ensuring that our, anyone who's on our site is safe. And why, why I find this particularly exciting is that, so whilst we're using it during the construction phase, now we're getting benefit now, it's really an opportunity to use this in the environment today, ready for when we have guests in the destination next year. So that's brought me up after 10 minutes, super quick. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you've got some more questions, I can, I can deal with those through the Q&A. I'm more than happy to, to speak after the event as well. Thank you.